Coming up on today's show, we talk about Colin Baker talking about who the 14th Doctor should be. Um, Bad Wolf, that's been bought out by Sony Pictures, maybe? Doctor Who movie? Probably not. And what on earth is Doctor Who Flux? We will talk all about it coming up in today's show. I'm the Doctor. I'm a Time Lord. I'm from the planet Gallifrey, the constellation of Casterberus. I hope the ears are a bit less conspicuous this time. You might be a Doctor. But I am. I'm a doctor. That's probably not the one you expect. Absolutely fantastic. All of time and space, everything that ever happened or ever will. Where do you want to start? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Bigger on the Inside, the new Who Doctor Who Watch Along podcast. How are you doing, Tim? Non-stop banter all week. Yeah, so we've got actually, surprisingly, out of nowhere, we got a heck ton of news this week. Out the park. Yeah, so let's start with the spicy pork that Tim had when he met KSI, because <laughs> I know that last week people really, really loved that, didn't they, Tim? Some people were indifferent. Some people said they. Some people said it was the best part of the show, and other people were, were were very vocal about how much they hated us talking. But don't worry, we're going to have our proverbial cake and eat it because I think we're going to put the timestamps in now. If I remember, if Tim remembers, there will be timestamps. Check that. Check that time bar line, and we'll see how good we are at keeping our promises. There we go. We, we will we'll definitely do a video on Torchwood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so starting up with some uh, familiar news, Time Fracture has closed again. What? It, is this, what is it this time? Guess. Is it flood damage? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they, what building is Time Fracture in? I think it's under the sea. No one's told them. <laughs> <laughs> it's that place, you know, uh, in The Runaway Bride, that place oh, yeah. that, with the giant spider lady. That's where Time Fracture is. I don't get it. I think it's it's not the same damage as before. This is new It's a damage. different kind of flood damage. Yeah, this is the third different flood damage work that Time Fracture's had. I mean, this is... I'm honestly amazed that Time Fracture is still managing to sustain <laughs> itself throughout all these periods of flood closure due to flood damage. I mean, the- I mean, it must be a really great, ex- you know, it's um, experience if, despite being close to these huge bouts of time, loads of people are still coming in. Yeah, I mean, it got to a point where I've been to London twice this year. Both times intending to see Time Fracture. No, but no. was a possibility. Mm. But both times it's been shut because of flood damage. It's bizarre. So you've throughout all the time, London. I mean, time I mean, I've been going to London for yeah. other stuff, and I thought, yeah. oh, while I'm there, if I've got some time, I'm going to see Time Fracture. Yeah, but that's not been so the case. since Time Fracture has been open. There's not been a single period where you've both been in London and Time Fracture has no, been open. And I don't go to London very often. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that I went to London twice this year is the most I think I've ever been to London in a year ever. Yeah. I usually go once every six years. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's yeah. kind of crazy that it's constantly shut. I mean, I don't really, there's not really much else to say I about mean, it. I feel other bad than, because like the yeah. first time it happened, it was like, oh, that's such a shame. Mm. But now it's quite, it's kind of a bit funny. I feel like they need to... Um, they need to do... Th- it's like, what are, are they... they are is someone they... just leaving a, a window open all the time? What's going I'm on? I'm just wondering... Someone not turning a tap off? I'm wondering what they're doing to fix it, because is it... Is it, I'm hoping it's more than temporary solutions. Like, if it's a different type of flood damage each time, that is really, really unfortunate. Yeah. But if it's consistently the same kind of flood damage, then it's like, I don't know, maybe it'd be helpful for them to... I mean, I'm not an architect or a business guy or a flood maintenance guy, <laughs> but I feel like maybe they need to invest in something more substantial to stop this flooding. I don't know. I'm trying to look on uh, on Google to see what it looks I mean, like. Is it an underground thing? Is it like an installation underground that you go inside? I'm not sure. Um... I would think, I don't know. So I'm guessing it's a kind of walk-through immersive theatre. I don't know what it is, because I thought it was like like what you said, that, where you walk through and you meet characters and you do an adventure. But then they were at West End Live and they were, like, singing songs and... Uh, is that, I don't think that's in... From what I've heard and seen of the advertising of Time Fracture, there is no singing or dancing in Time Fracture. 
my understanding was that they just did that to fit into kind of the model of what that their Western live event was. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't see whereabouts it is, but yeah. Cool. Hmm. I mean, I hope I hope that those repairs are fixed. Same. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It does yeah. look really good. Like I look at the pictures, and it yeah. looks fantastic. Yeah. I mean, oh, look at that. How cool does that look? That does look cool. I'm just worried that you know if they don't fix it soon, that Roger Taylor will leave London as well. Roger Taylor from Queen, because Brian May left London because of the flooding. Did he? So was that too much of a deep cut? It was, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Well, not really. Yeah, it was a little bit because I've been to London twice, and on the second time, I saw Brian May. Yeah, but he, doesn't, <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't live there anymore. He just came back for Back to the Future the musical. Oh, did he? What yeah. a hero. Yeah. Saw his wife as well, Anita mm-hmm. Dobson. Oh yes. Second time I've seen her. Where did he see her the first time? I don't, know. I don't know if I've seen her before. I feel like she was in Hull for something once. Like a panther or something. Oh. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's uh, she's she is, is the one who inspired the song I Want It All. Oh, really? Yeah, because apparently she said to she, Bro- looked, she went to a buffet and she was like, oh, I want it all. And Freddie went, aha. Well, I, I think she actually did say at one point to Brian, I want it all, I want it now, in just some kind of context of what she wanted in life. And Brian May was like, ooh. I like that. Was that after or before she declared her love for fat bottom girls? When did she do that? Well, I thought she said, I love fat bottom girls. And they went, ha I'm pretty sure Brian was still married to his first wife when he wrote fat bottom girls. Are you saying his first wife had a fat bottom? I I um I don't know enough about Brian May's first wife. What's her name? I don't know. I know his second <laughs> wife was is Anita Dobson. Yeah, she's like a very nice person. I'm sure she is. Yeah. Should we carry on with the news? Yes. <laughs> there you go. That's your banter for this week. <laughs> mm. I hope that I get the same timestamp. <laughs> Time fracture slash Brian, Brian May. <laughs> Next up, we have Colin Baker chipping in on his thoughts on who the 14th Doctor should be. Thank goodness for Colin Baker. We all needed to know what he thought. I mean, I remember like when Jody was first cast, he was kind of one of the very first previous was, doctors yeah. to be really openly supportive because he's got twitter it. he's on twitter yeah i don't well, was it, saw it, bones heck i think it is. wasn't it like an interview at like a convention or something where he was asked there was the whole uh, thing where peter had his reservations <laughs> and he said i'm sorry peter you're full of rubbish there <laughs> oh yeah yeah um yeah where yeah where i think he said something like oh sorry but you're talking absolute rubbish there so yeah um what's what's he said um let me just get it up um Thank your pardon. Oh, zing. The radio I've met, I've met a person at university article. this week whose name is Ryan Johnson. <gasps> the Ryan Johnson <laughs> of Knives Out and Looper wow. and no other films that would cause controversy. Well, we met, I met him. He's, on a, he's in a society I'm part of, and I went, and I sort of, sort of introduced himself. And in my head, I went, oh, cool. And then the person who I'm with, who I won't name, went, oh, you're like the Star Wars guy. And I was like, oh, you dick. <laughs> How much do you think he gets that? I mean, to be honest, like, Ryan Johnson isn't a huge public figure. He did say he doesn't figure. get much. Yeah. I imagine he gets it from the exact same type of person mm. that my friend is. Oh, it was Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> what does Colin Maker have to say about the 14th Doctor, Harris, Harry? What does he say? <sighs> Trying to find that quote, aren't you? Because, like, there's lots of quotes, but some of them, I can't tell which ones are Colin Baker. Um, usually, it probably says Colin Baker after them. No, let me just find. Well, I, I always find it strange. Like, there's loads of questions from Russell T. Davies. You, you have a Chris for a quote and I'll do and I'll do some talking. Yeah, do some talking. I think like when when I saw this, I sort of went, "Why are they asking Colin Baker?" But I think I would have been like that no matter which classic doctor they asked because it's I, I sort of really now see those two eras of the show, Classico and New Who, as sort of two very different things. So I find it strange when they ask... Tim, you, uh, you, just, you, you gave me the link, link link to the wrong article. Uh, did I watch the This article? is the article of Russell returning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's no Colin Baker quotes. <laughs> just have a googs, have a googs. All right. Let me have a look. I'll have a look. Colin Baker. Here he is. Is that, is that the train chase music? That's a film tune to Man Lab. What's Man Lab? Man Lab was a James May TV series from a few years ago. I I, I never heard about that. Thank you. What does Colin say? Find it, Harry. I don't edit these. Yeah, yeah. Um... Do it in your Colin Baker voice. I, I do. I have a Colin Baker voice. Do Ringo Starr. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Con Baker, Sam at Ring of Stars, said this. There's a whole sector of the acting community that's been ill served for decades. It'll certainly, I suspect, not be a white middle aged man. I would like to think it will be another female doctor because I enjoyed watching Geordie. Good. Well done, Colin. I think he's right. Yeah. And it's interesting. I have a very really interesting thing he says about watching Jodie. Because he clearly has been watching the show where he says, Oh, sorry. I love something that she has brought that I've never seen in a doctor before, which is joy. The joy of being the doctor. I suppose joy isn't a particularly manly attribute. Usually, smugness is more what men go for rather than joy. That's true. I never very really thought of that with Jodie's doctor. There is a lot of joy in that performance, isn't there? When... When you look at Tennant or Smith, there is a lot of they know they're the cleverest person in the room, sort mm. of thing. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I feel like jo- yeah, Jodie's performance doesn't have that kind of presumptiveness. I th- yeah. I think it's true, like you hear so much about the series 13 and 12 and 11 crew saying that they have lots of fun. And I feel like you can tell when you watch. You can yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. tell that Jodie is really enjoying herself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, I'd be surprised as well if they went back to a white dude. Mm. Especially, well, we're saying Oli Alexander's our top choice. Okay, white, straight, <laughs> middle aged dude. Yeah, Oli's yeah. not middle aged, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think it's sort of like if they were just to go back to the most basic, not yeah. to say that those castings are basic, but do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what we've had before, I'd be very surprised. Yeah. Especially yeah. with Russell and, uh, you know. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I like, I don't think, I, um, I know you mentioned him last week, but I, I just do not think Ben Whishaw's in the running, always based on that alone. Yeah. And also because, you know, he's got other things to do. Paddington 3. Yeah. Yeah. But Ben Whishaw's, ben Whishaw's um, not straight, though, is he? Is he not? Yeah, I, I, so. I have no idea. I've never looked into so. what Ben Whishaw's... I think he is. I, I honestly don't know. I don't know anything about <laughs> Ben Whishaw's... He's got um, a boyfriend or something, doesn't he? Does he? I don't know. I think... Oh, wait, no, I can't say that. That's a... That's a that's a James Bond spoiler. Spouse, that means Spouse, yeah, that's like the other he, half. He married a, a gentleman called Mark Bradshaw in oh. 2012. Oh I no, I didn't realise. I think that means he likes men. I I, I, I didn't realise. <laughs> oh. I didn't I didn't know. Um yeah, strange. Hmm. <laughs> not... <laughs> what? <laughs> no, not not strange that he likes men, strange that we didn't know. Yeah, well, I guess it's just not something, I guess but it was one of those actors where very much like his I acting don't see work, Ben Whishaw. His acting work precedes himself as a. He's more. Like, almost as Christopher Eccleston in the sense that kind of. You don't hear his, about him His acting well. work comes before his. Persona. Pub, yeah, yeah, his public image. Yeah, I yeah. quite like it when that's the way around. Yeah. <laughs> I prefer it. Mm. So I feel like then there's less talk and speculation about, well, this is what they've done in the past and they've said this, so yeah. that means they're going to play it like this or, or whatever. I like it when, like Ben Whishaw, I, I see Ben Whishaw in a thing and then I forget about him until he does his next thing and I go, oh yeah, Ben Whishaw. He's good. Yeah. yeah. Whereas people like, this isn't a dig or anybody, um, Mark Wahlberg, yeah. instance, you go, Mark Wahlberg's doing that thing and then he's constantly in the zeitgeist all the time. Yeah. So you like never forget about Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> Do you know what I mean though? Like yeah. there's like those big A-list actors who like mm. you just hear it's like, like like Tom Hanks, they're just this huge public persona of being our oh, friendly Tom Hanks, yeah. America's friendly uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Turning up at people's weddings and do you see that where like Which Tom was getting married in the park? Oh like, yeah, Tom Hanks was going for a job. Yeah. He's like, oh, what's going on here? Yeah. So like, I think he just turned up, he's like, hi everybody. And everyone went, it's Tom Hanks. But that must be like you must get to a certain point where you know. Somebody here is going to know who I am. Mm. That must be cool, though. I've always wanted to meet Tom Hanks because I'd like to get him to sign the foot of my Woody doll. Oh, that'd be really <laughs> yeah. cute. as Tom or as Andy? Oh, or as Tom. Woody? As Tom. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that'd be cool. But he's like, it's my, it's my Woody now. <laughs> he, just <laughs> he just takes it from you. <laughs> it's my name on the boot, so it's mine. Yeah. Did you not watch the movie, Tim? That's what happens. <laughs> Do you have? On one, you should have it on one foot. You put your own name, Tim. Yeah. On the other foot, it's Tom. And so he crosses it out. <laughs> he crosses the O off. He, and he, gets, like, he gets some scissors. Just cuts the foot off. <laughs> <laughs> What's some of the other news, Harry? We have Russell T. Davis talking about Doctor Who. Woo! So let's get the views. 
Leslie Davis on the Queer's Folk reboot, Doctor Who, and his new ITV drama about. <laughs> he was asked things. about. He was asked about who's going to play the Fourteenth Doctor, Harry. Well, okay, I'll, I'll skip to that bit. This is a long article, so talk to fill me in. I will. So it's an interview with the Radio Times. I think no, it's not. It's with somebody, and they asked Russell. They said, "Hey, Russ, Russ, my boy, I've got to ask you about Doctor Who because that's what gets the ad revenue." Um, who's going to play the 14th Doctor? And uh, Harry, hopefully, by the time I finish this sentence... OK, I've got it. Yeah, so the the um, he was asked, what do you think of Ollie Alexander's Doctor Who? And he says, oh, stop it. What nonsense. I'm not joining any speculation about that. My Doctor Who is way off. It's the 60th anniversary, which is November 2023. This is all too soon. I can't. So that's not a deconfirmation at all. <laughs> so I think that's basically. So he hasn't. They, they haven't cast it yet. Or or he's not willing to talk publicly about. I it. I don't think they've cast it yet. I. That's what I think. Right, they're filming the centenary special now. Yeah. Which is Jodie's last episode, which by logic would state she regenerates in that episode. Mm. But they haven't cast the fourteenth Doctor yet, which makes me think that. Production of the Centenary special won't wrap for quite a while because I think they will. Russell will want to write a few episodes and then cast, and then once he knows who the Fourteenth Doctor is, they will bring Jodie back to film her regeneration scene. I, I, I think, I think that was just very clever press avoidance tactics from Russell. I think he, I think. I don't think mind- it's been cast, but I think he's got a shortlist. I think he, I think he knows who he wants, and, and I think that person. I think it's Ollie. <laughs> and also, he's asked this: What qualities does an actor need to take on that role? Ginger hair. They need to have been a singer. <laughs> he says they've got to be limitless. In a single word, they've got to be limitless. They've got to be capable of doing anything. They need to be able to both act and have a successful music career. <laughs> That's not what he says, is it? No, it isn't. <laughs> but <laughs> I think wasn't there a TV series called Limitless? Maybe that's a hint. I don't know. Was there a, there's probably been something called Limitless. Limitless 2011 action thriller. It's an hour and 45 minutes. And who was in it? <gasps> Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper is the 14th Doctor? Or Robert De Niro. <laughs> Robert De Niro. I, I can't imagine that. No, I can't. But, you know, confirm. There you go. Ooh, it's confirmed. We can put them in the fun. I, I was thinking, though, um, chances are... The, if you're going to put money on it, you've put money on it being Ollie. Mm. But I, I went back and I looked through a few other of Russell's things because he does have a tendency of casting people who's worked with previously in his new stuff. Yeah. He's a television Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Um, so we've, in the past we've spoken, I thought I'd throw a few names at you and you can go, hell yeah, or I don't know. Okay. Lydia West. We've discussed this. I think that's equally a possibility. Just as equal a possibility as Ollie. I would prefer that over Ollie, I feel. Okay. I'm not sure why, though. Yeah. It's interesting. I can see both of them working. Yeah. Yeah. But Lydia West um, looks younger than Ollie. She looks like a teen. She looks young. Mm. And so does Ollie, but Ollie... I feel like Ollie's got a sort of almost ageless quality to him, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like some... I feel like Ollie's almost similar to Chris in that sense. They've gone, got, I don't know. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, I, I, she's my favourite to play the role. That's what I'd say. I wouldn't be disappointed if anybody else played it. Uh, we spoke about it just a few seconds ago, but Ben Wishaw, a very English scandal, mm-hmm. often a fan favourite yeah. thrown around every single I year. think he'd be very good. I don't know if maybe he's... His eyes are on very big. I mean, I, I can't say Project Speed and Doctor Who because I feel like Doctor Who's suddenly going to skyrocket in its worth when Russell and Bad Wolf and such come on board. Yeah. Um, um, who else do I have here? Let me have a quick look. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Tim <laughs> was looking at the thumbnail that he'd made. How would you pronounce um, this lady's name? Manpreet Bambra? Yes. Uh, she worked with Russell on a team, children's TV series. I don't know if you remember it called Wizards vs. Aliens. I don't remember Wizards vs. Aliens. It was at the same, it was like when Sarah Jane Smith wrapped up. Um, she that was like the 
the, the new version of that. Was she, like, leading that? Yeah, she was, like, one of the leads, and she's done a number of things since. She's been on, like, a lot of British TV shows, so she's done, like, stints in Doctors and Casualty and stuff like that. Okay. But has done a lot of stuff for kids at, at one point, so did, like, So Awkward, The Dumping Ground, Wizards versus Aliens, but more recently has been in um, other things, like a short in 20... A couple of shorts called Hate, Sha, and Catch a Butch here. So she's... Got like I'm looking at her IMDb here. She's not a huge credit. There's 20 different things there, but from what I've seen of her, and what I've had a quick look online, she seems like a very diverse performer. Yeah, that'd be uh, interesting as limitless. Yeah, <laughs> and that'd be interesting, like of kind of a relatively unknown. I know Doctor never picks the biggest star there, but normally it's someone you've kind of heard of. Like I remember when Jody was cast, I was like. Who's she? Oh, oh, the sad Broadchurch lady, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the woman who's constantly running on the cliffs all the time. Was she running on the cliffs? She's always doing a little jogging. I know she did delete a lot of jogging in the first episode, like, because of the car things and she ran up to her dead little boy. Yeah. yeah. What's Free Rain? Free Rain? Yeah. I've not heard of Free Rain. Um, apparently it's a television drama. She was in that as well. Oh, cool. Got Jodie, um, the other person. Yeah. I've instantly forgotten. Okay. Um, anybody else from past Russell stuff? Uh, pretty much you can pick anyone from it. Russell same. Toby, he's done multiple things with Russell. He auditioned to play the 11th Doctor. Mm, and he didn't, didn't get, it. get it. And I don't think... I can't see I it, can't weirdly, see it. and I don't know why. It's because he looks too much like Russell Toby. And, why? and I, I know that sounds daft, but like I was talking to my mum about it, Maybe and she really said not... that there's like... Because like I said, what about Rowan Atkinson? She said no, because I wouldn't not be able to see Rowan Atkinson. Yeah. It's almost like The Rock. Yeah. Well, the Rock can play any role he wants, but I'm watching The Rock. Yeah. And it's same with Will Smith. And I feel Russell Tovey has that same problem where he has such an iconic face hmm. that I can't not see Russell Tovey. Yeah, okay. From the job centre. Yeah. <laughs> but that didn't stop them from recasting him in the Arden Pirates movie. What's that? Um, he played one of the characters, I think it was... Um, the albino pirate or something like that in the Arvin, the Pirates and Adventure of Scientists. Yeah. But then when they um, took it to the US, not only did they rechange the title to the, the Pirates pirate. Band of Misfits, yeah. they also recast some of the English voices, oh, really? including Russell Tovey. Oh. I think they recast them with Anton Yelchin. Yeah. Yeah. He was um, in Star Trek. Yes, they, they recast Russell Tovey with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been having a weird thing with voices recently, don't they? Do they? Well, with Chicken Run 2. Oh, oh, yeah, they're not recasting the woman who played Ginger, right? Ginger's not returning, obviously. Who is it? Mel Gibson. Mel, he's definitely not returning. Hmm. Um, and I think there's maybe two others that have been recast as well. So it's basically just going to be an all new Chicken Run cast. Yeah, which thinks a bit strange. Is it, um, is it coming? Is it going to be a straight to Netflix thing? Straight to thing? Netflix thing, yeah. Oh, which I'm I looking forward like... to. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, but I feel like Chicken Run was like their big theatrical debut. It's a bit weird that its return would not also be a theatrical release. Maybe it might be. I feel like they announced the. Netflix thing during COVID. Yeah. So there's a good chance that could change. I'd hope so. It's been a while since... As long since... as they get Timothy Spall back mm. and whoever played the other rat. Yeah. It's been... It's weird they've never not had, like... When was the last time there was a big Arden theatrical release? Was it the first... Sean, Sean... The, the last Sean the Sheep, I think. Really? Farmageddon. Farmageddon. Was that in cinemas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I, I just... I want to see a... You know, a big budget Ardman project in cinemas. I find Ardman strange because I follow them on social media and there's a lot of, we've got a job available, apply for it. And I'm like, you're Ardman. I find it so strange that they're advertising their jobs on I think that's social. cool. Like, no, it's so cool. Casting calls. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's brilliant. But I also go, that's really strange. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. I'd like to work for Ardman. I'd love to work for Ardman, but all the jobs and stuff I can't do. It's like, do you want to be an animator? Yep, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you should, like, you just get a bring a ball of class plasticine. <laughs> Start moving it around on the table. Yeah, I did a morph. Doing it! <laughs> <laughs> just do a little morph for him. I, I, I built a morph when I was younger. We had one of those sets where it was like, build your own morph. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was literally just a lump of brown clay. <laughs> yeah, it sort of told you how to mould it and stuff like okay, that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anything else? Oh, yeah, there's more news about Doctor Who. Oh, thank goodness. Um... Doctor Who. Did you see that KSI is going to be doing some sport relief stuff this week? Um, where is this leading? Uh, I don't know. I just saw it. And I've, you know, we talk about KSI now and again. We're both yeah, this fans. is also a. We'll have to change this to be on the inside the new Who Doctor Who and KSI Watch Along podcast. 
Yeah, he's, oh, there's some stuff here about the documentary, the, the Amazon Prime documentary as well. That's gonna about be cool. KSI. Yeah, they were filming it when I was. Did I not tell you this? You did not tell me they were filming a documentary while you were. It's a Louis Theroux documentary. Really? Yeah. You saw Louis Theroux there? Was he there? Was he there? Who? Louis Theroux? No. Oh. But it's for Amazon Prime. Oh. Um, so could you be in an Amazon Prime documentary about KSI? I hope so. Made by Louis Theroux. Yeah. Can you get a credit as Tim Taxi? In 2014, guy? he starred in KSI Demolished on Comedy Central, which saw him getting roasted by British comedians. KSI has also appeared on countless well-known TV shows, Celebrity Bake Off, Celebrity Goggle Box, and Top Gear, to name a few. He's on Top Gear? Yeah. Wow. Um, Amazon Prime has confirmed the dog will be out in 2022, but it hasn't yet set an exact date. We'll let you know as soon as we know anything. KSI is interesting. He feels like one of the few YouTube celebrities who has actually made the transition from YouTube famous to fame, like mainstream famous. You don't think Smosh did that with their movie, Smosh the movie? No. No one outside of the YouTube sphere know who Anthony Padilla or Ian Hecox are. <laughs> Whereas ma- p- mainstream people... Ray William Johnson's on TikTok now. That doesn't count as... I'm doing like... Main- I'm just saying. Yeah. Jeez. What does he do on TikTok? A bit like equals free, sort of doing that again, but in short video forms. Really? Does he still do like the what was it called? Cute win fail? No, what was that? Is that not Ray William Johnson? I don't know, it could be. I didn't watch Ray William Johnson. <laughs> I never watched Equals Three. Well, who else? Who else? Troy Savan? Who? He's an American singer. He was a YouTuber as well. Oh, has he did he make a transition to like tried to be a singer, didn't really work. Anyway, this, well, is a, didn't really... this is a terrible That's episode. the point I'm making. KSI did succeed. What's the news, Harry? Doctor Who filming is what you um, labelled it as, so I don't know what this means. <laughs> um, yeah, they were filming the Centenary special, Harry. Oh, yeah, that's the gate in Cardiff. Yeah, and uh, there's rumours that a certain character is going to be returning. Is, is it Graham? Nope. Is it Ryan? Nope. Is it from from the Chibnall era or like an actual legacy character? Legacy character. Really? Who? The master. Not the Sasha Dallan master? Yeah, the Sasha Dallan master, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, cool. Because someone was seen holding a box that said the master action props. Ah. So then we all went, whoa, the master's back. Great. I, mean, um, I really like Sasha Dallan's master. Great. Uh, he didn't say master, actually. He said the master. Yeah. Which implies uh, the ma- and also there was somebody on set that day that they were trying to keep hidden because they kept covering them up in cloths and umbrellas and all that. Yeah, that was probably such a <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. so you're doing, Imagine if like, one of like the um, <laughs> people on the crew said this way, Sasha, just really loudly. <laughs> but I, just through here, Sasha. What I is they know that people are stood there watching, mm. and they know that if anything gets leaked, it's going to be on the internet straight away. So that guy holding that box. A, he's holding it so you can see the label, right? So he must have got a telling off. He must have done because he's basically. I feel like the labeling department should have maybe got more discreet label or like got a code name for the master if they're going to be shooting outdoors. They're still shooting indoors. Oh, yeah. Then what, how did we see the box? Someone was carrying it from outdoors to indoors. Like on the studio lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And also, I would also, just as a joke, Get a load of boxes and just write stuff on them. Missy Rani. David Tennant props. <laughs> I don't know. I would just buy a pair of red converses and just carry them around. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Because the internet would blow up. It'd That'd be, be such crazy. Good diversion in one tactics. hand, I'd have some hair gel, and in the other hand, I'd have my red converses. I'd just carry them around. I'd have someone come out and just say, I work for Christopher Eccleston. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Eccleston, actor who played the Ninth Doctor, where are you? <laughs> that would be quite funny. Yeah, I would totally do something like that if you worked for. Because I feel like I feel like you would maybe get the chance of being told off. Hmm. But I feel that also go, by doing that, you've also then taken attention away from the actual. Yeah, thing I, I get a radio out and say, "Matt's on the run. Matt's on the run. Yeah. Not not in a good way. We're not we're not filming him. He's just gone." <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited that Sasha's coming back. Mm. Um, I, it's strange because everybody goes on about how, lo- how much they love Sasha Dwyer as a master. I really like him. 
But I, I always feel like we haven't seen enough of him yet to really mm. form a strong opinion. You feel like we need kind of an end of time? Yeah, like you have moment. those three master episodes where I know Joel Sims only in really two and a bit, mm. but they really cement that character. And I, mean, I feel had, like with mm. Sasha... We've had two full stories of him, yeah. But he fleets in and out of them, really. Mm. He's them are wholly master-centric. Yeah. Like Spyfall... We don't get the reveal until the end, and then kind of he's off screen. And then in the next episode, it's almost like they're chasing him a lot of it, isn't yeah. it? And it's sort of like, so you don't see a lot of him. Mm. Um, the Thomas Children one, though, you see a lot of him. He's very good in that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I hope that if he is returning, we get more than just a yeah. hologram in the TARDIS. It's weird to think how, like, Missy was in, like, every Capaldi series. Yeah. Like, she was really, really prominent, like... She, she was basically a supporting lead. I was. I also find it strange that people go, can't believe they haven't brought any of the Missy stuff up because, like, obviously that character sort of redeemed herself almost. Mm. But then didn't she like die as soon as she redeemed herself? Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, well, then she regenerated into Sasha Dewar, mm. and people. Are I like, assume we don't really know. No, that. no, there's. Is it, is, yeah, it, is it confirmed? Because yeah, yeah. I know the master timeline is a little yeah. bit all over the place. There goes Sim, Gomez, Dewar. Oh, oh, so yeah. the new who masters are in yeah, order. Yeah. Okay. Um, but like people are, but I'm always like, but when we get a new doctor, they're not like Matt Smith. I'm like, I still miss Rose. Do you know what mm. I mean? It's sort of yeah. When 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 time was regenerated, kind of move on. Yeah. So I don't yeah. understand like the hate for that, but yeah, mm. I'm excited to see more. I think I guess it's just because I guess as a thing of like the, the Chibnall era is kind of a, was a big step away from the Moffat stuff that preceded it, more so than the Moffat stuff was a step away from the yeah. RTD stuff. I'd say so, like with a new show where you've got it, you can't just carry on whatever the guy before you was doing. I would say there's some story yeah. points you can carry on, mm. but like character development, that should all really be wrapped up. Yeah, because that, that's, Jim and they kind of do complete clean slate. Because yeah. Moffat pretty much wrapped everything up. Yeah. He didn't leave anything unresolved. Yeah. No. I mean, he, he left lots of things unresolved during his run in between <laughs> series because he knew that he'd have time to resolve it. Yeah. But he knew he was leaving, so he wrapped it all up. Yeah, yeah. I think Chibnall's going to do the same. Yeah. I feel like people go, oh, he hasn't explained this. Go, it's not over. Yeah, we have a whole series. <laughs> yeah. We have... We you, have... Got, you, got, you got five, you got all of Flux, which we'll get to. Yes. You've then got a, a seasonal special... You then got an Easter special, and you've got the centenary special. Yeah, so, so he has good. plenty of time to wrap things up. We've got eight episodes to wrap all this stuff up, yeah. Yeah. Should we move on? Yes. So this is a very, this could potentially be really big news or potentially be nothing at all, which is about Sony Pictures oh, yeah. is looking to, Sony Pictures Television is looking to uh, um, purchase uh, the production company Bad Wolf. So we're going to become shareholders in it, aren't we? Yes, and I think they want to increase their shares so they become the, like, the primary shareholder. And I know there's a lot of talk about... Obviously, obviously the so obvious thing to talk about is, does this mean we're going to get a Doctor Who Sony movie? That's, no. No. <laughs> well, because we, it said it's Sony Pictures Television. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So it's... <laughs> I don't think it will result in that. No. And also, so much is owned... Sorry, um, let me rephrase that. So many media industries or media companies are owned by bigger, higher-ups that you mm. don't already know that... It, it's, it sounds very exciting. Sony Pictures is going to buy Bad Wolf, who are currently co-producing Doctor Who for the BBC. Hooray! But that, Sony isn't going to own Doctor no, Who. And then, BBC still still own Doctor yeah, Who. And yeah, and Sony aren't going to give any money towards that, I wouldn't have thought. That's mm. not how that works. I feel like just kind of like... Sony give money to Bad Wolf, really. That's how that works. Yeah. Like Bad Wolf can expand yeah. as a business, not so much make better. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Does that mean the new... The, our RTD two era could potentially have a notable increase in budget. Possibly, I don't imagine it would be anything near like you know HBO budget. Oh no, no, no. nothing like that. Oh, no. but like um, Sony Pictures is becoming a shareholder with Bad Wolf, who are co-producing Doctor Who. I feel that's too far removed. Yeah, and it's not confirmed. And if it will be, it will be a few years off. I feel. Yeah, but but we want to be able to make the title of this video Sony making Doctor Who movie. So let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be Daniel Craig. Now he's left Bond. Daniel Craig is movie who. <laughs> Um, the I, name's Who, Doctor Who. I do have a video in the pipelines for a Doctor Who movie that was cancelled, but we'll save that for another day. 
a, a different Doctor Who movie yeah. to the TV movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And different to the Peter Cushing ones. Yeah. Wow, I didn't know well, about cancel. that. It never got made. I didn't know about that. Yeah, well, we'll find out. Karen Gillan recently spoke about it. Really? Well, she was going to be in it. Oh, it was no, she back. wasn't, but she spoke about it. How did she... Well, you have to wait and see. That sounds very exciting. But yeah, no, the, I saw a lot of talk about that Sony Pictures thing, but like, there's... It's like so much is owned by Disney, but you don't go, oh, Disney are making a whatever movie. Do you know what I mean? I, I literally, on the way here, I was saying Disney are making Muppets Haunted Mansion. Well, they've already made it. Well, yeah, and it's coming out soon. It's already out. Is it already out? Yeah. Have you watched it? Nope. Neither have I. It's Disney Plus. Huh. But you know what I mean? It's like Disney owns so much, and it's like the Disney thing of it. Yeah. Obviously, like, that's different, because Di- Muppets is a Disney product. I was talking about, like, Disney, the company, also own different television networks. And yeah, stuff. they own Bob's Burgers now, and yeah. no one, no one's calling Bob's Burgers a Disney. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't really, you know, it's sort of so far removed from Doctor Who that it's not really, uh, it's not really exciting. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint you. Uh, it's okay. What was you hoping for? I was hoping for big budget movie with Spider Man, <laughs> Tom Holland as Doctor Who, Andrew Garfield as Doctor Who, and Tobey Maguire, and all three of them were Doctor all Who. playing past incarnation. No, they're all the same incarnation of the Doctor. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> should we carry on? The yeah, well, big news, the actual big news. We've got the teaser for the next series of Doctor Who, which is now called Flux. So let's talk about that, because I did a little video where I spoke about the release date, which is like two weeks from now. It's Halloween. Are you going to go see Halloween? Did you see Halloween? The new one? Week? Yeah. No. Are you going to see Halloween Kills? I don't know if I get anything out of it, because I've not watched any other Halloween movies. So, anyway, Doctor Who... Uh, it's back on Halloween. That's, that's sort of when we fought. Yeah. I think the first episode is going to be Halloween based. You think so? Well, there was some filming with pumpkins. Okay, fun. <laughs> uh, but yeah, should we talk about Flux? Flux. So, Flux, I'm guessing Series 13 is called Flux, but because Series 13 is one big story, that story is called Flux. I think it's been branded as like a mini series because it's five episodes. Is it? I thought it was six episodes. Six, including a season. Oh, okay. So you're going to have your, your five episodes of yes. the series and a New Year's special. Which is the, the thing they like branding as her biggest sto- adventure yet, which for New Who is true. Yeah. This is the biggest New Who story. Yeah, yeah. I know that there's stuff like War Games and Trial of the Time Lord. Um, but I like, yeah, so the Flux figure is what I'm thinking they're branding this series as. It's Doctor Who Flux, which is sort of yeah. like, and it's almost like going to be, I think they're branded as like a special series. Yeah, do you think like they'll will, will have like special, a special title sequence and stuff like that? Possibly, I didn't really think of that. Like if they're going to rebrand it. I don't think you'll watch it and it'll say Doctor Who Flux. You don't think so? I, th- I think it's a possibility that they will. Really? What, like the opening title? Yeah, because then in, because then if they didn't do that, then every title would have to be Flux Part 1, Flux Part 2. Well, this two. is what I sort of suggested in that video is that you might watch it because in do you remember that New York that Comic Con panel where the day after was they announced Jodie and Chris were leaving? Oh yeah. Well, in that panel where they all had to give a word to describe the series, uh, Christian was said swarm, um, which we now sort of means sort of all these different aliens are seem yes. to be swarming towards Earth. Um, so I think swarm and flux they're almost yeah. quite interchangeable words. Mm. So I think. I think you will watch it on television and it will say on the TV guide, it will say Doctor Who, and then you push the info button, it comes up with a thing about the show. Mm. And I think it will say Flux colon the Sun Sirens, okay. Flux colon the Weeping Angels. Yeah. So I think each episode will be branded Flux and then whatever that week's monster is going to be. Yeah. So let's actually talk about, because the teaser for how short it was actually gave us quite a comprehensive bit of info about what's going on. Yeah. Where it's the Doctor talking quite intensely, which is cool, about how there's something coming called the Flux. Yeah. And the fl- through the Flux are all these monsters coming. The Weeping Angels, which you knew about, the Sontarans, which you knew about, a new enemy called the Ravagers, which you knew about, and I'm guessing isn't we, related, Pam? Did we? Yeah. Huh. I don't think we knew. No, we didn't know about oh, it. Oh, sorry, I thought you said we knew about it. No, we didn't. Oh, no. Unless you count uh, the first um, series of Christopher Eccleston Big Finishes, which was called Ravages. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. But I don't think it's going to be the same Ravages. I would be very surprised. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you were saying? Yeah, but, yeah, and basically all those things are coming through something called the Flux. I yeah. don't know what the Flux is, if it's, like, if it's an, if that's an enemy or if it's, like, a... 
I don't know, sci-fi concept thing, like I a type of black hole. Yeah, I imagine it's something like that. Like yeah. a big old pool in the sky that yeah. things are coming through. I'm excited, man. I like that idea. Mm. I think it, it works really well with the limitations that they've had as well. Mm. Like they can only really film in England mm. or in a studio. So why not just have it that every, instead of the Doctor travels to the aliens... Do you have a reason for all the aliens to come and invade Earth? Do you think it could potentially be an almost kind of a poetry era base under siege feel? If, like, where it's a limited number of locations constantly under attack? Yeah, why not? I mean, Unit are playing a part in this series. We've seen some set photos of where they've been filming at a new Unit HQ. Mm. Um, so, yeah, why not? And I, I think I quite like that. I know I've watched some Pair 3 stuff and it can get a bit boring, but the show's got a bigger budget than it did back then. and you know, TV is so much better. <laughs> mm. So you could... Do... Also, I feel like the, the fact it's all being branded as one big story kind of gives them license to really focus and flesh out a, yeah. limit, a small number of locations. I'll be interested there to see. So we know the Sun Tower's back. We know the Weeping Angels are back. I, I wonder what, if any other classic monsters are going to slip through there, slip through into the flux. I, I also wonder if the, the whole flux thing is going to go on into the 2022 specials. Mm. Um, I would have thought so because they no, seem like, to be commissioned yeah. after this series. Yeah, and I feel like this series has been developed kind of separately. Yes, that's what yeah. it feels like. Um, so no, I'm really, really excited about this. I think there's some. It's a, it's a really interesting concept. It's something it hasn't done before. It's better than it seems to be more interesting than just Monster of the Week, totally. Which is what it has been recently. Although, um, wouldn't this be a different monster through the flux every week? It would be, but I feel the fact that it's going to be a continuing, a continuing story mm. where it's going to revolve around the flux and why these monsters seem to be coming in. Yeah, rather than just, like I really like the Flash, but every week that was like, remember the event from episode one that caused Barry to get his superpowers? Well, it gave a lot of bad guys powers as well, and We'll take those down every week. Whereas this seems to be, there's the mothership of the flux. We've got to find out what that is. So there's that consistent. Yeah, that end seems point to be the, in goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm really looking forward to this. I know um, I watched, I watched Strictly anyway, but I made sure I was in when yeah. it started and when it ended so I could catch that Doctor Who. Yeah. And they are... first look at John Bishop as well. Yes, he says something, doesn't he? He says, what does he say? Oh, I can't do it, Doctor. What was that? <laughs> that did not sound like Sure, I'm struggling here, Doctor. I can't do it. Where's he from? Liverpool. He's from Liverpool, Do yeah. your star. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it, Doctor. There you go. And then Yaz is there as well, and it's all very good. I, I like that marketing thing now of where yeah. we're not just going to drop a trailer, we're going to do little teasers. Yeah. And I imagine that this Saturday they're going to drop yeah. something else. I've been seeing those teasers, that same Flux teaser, pretty consistently on TV. Like, even when I'm not yes. looking for it, it's been popping up between shows. Yeah. They're really pushing it. They want people to know that Doctor Who is coming back. It's interesting because it came on, didn't it? And it was sort of like it was the other week, mm. last Sunday, where there was just like a couple of glitches and she's going, can you hear me? Mm. Uh, and that sort of came on. I went, oh, was that it? And I li- I got up <laughs> to go and do something because the trailer for that David Attenborough thing started oh, playing. Yeah. And it came back on. I was like, ah! <laughs> I was like, oh, they tricked me. <laughs> and I, so I liked it, yeah. And I imagine that it's on. It's going to be on on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Um, 8.30 is the rumoured time. Okay. What some reports say, which is a really good trial. That'd be time. right after the street which, results. Which is good. Yeah. So you, don't, you don't want it before. You want, you. let's face it, Strictly is bigger than Doctor Who. So you want people to watch Strictly and then stay Get watching around. for Doctor Who? I think right now I'm about to announce when like the final judge is going to say who's going, it should like glitch out and show you people. <laughs> like, mm. uh, so 8.30, great time on a Sunday night, great day. Um, anything else? No, I'm I'm excited for Flux. I wasn't expecting to be as excited for Series 13 as I'm getting. No, but no, and I, I, would, I would just keep it on BBC One every Saturday night. Yeah. Before and after Strictly. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll get a full, a proper trailer or not. They might just leave it with this teaser. I think you'll get a trailer. Do you think so? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jodie's on the Graham Norton show, isn't she? Next week. Okay. So you think they'll want some kind of clip for them to she, show? She, she'll be on the Graham Norton show on Friday, and then the show will air on the Sunday. Hmm. So I imagine, I imagine when she's on the Graham Norton show, they will show a clip. Hmm. Um. And then the week before that, we'll get a trailer. Okay, that makes sense. Because I know when she went on it for her first series, she 
they showed a clip. Mm. Oh yeah, the one in the train. In the train, yeah. So um, yeah, I look forward to that. Yeah. yeah. And if any other Doctor Who news, or is that everything? That's all the news. Oh, it's been quite a chilled one. We did some banter, but not too much banter this week. Yeah. And now we are. Oh, it's the no... final episode, isn't it? As well as yeah. series four. Yeah, it's been it's been quite a journey, hasn't it? God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> And now that journey's at its end. Shut up! Shut up! Shut the up, up, up! Make sure you subscribe to the official Bigger on the Inside podcast! <laughs> What's the point in having you all? Harry, after. It feels like we're at the end of David Tennant's tenure, but we're not. But it's the end of Series 4. Um, I kind of felt a bit emotional towards the end of this one. Yeah, um, <laughs> I know. The, see, the thing I, is, I was really, really emotionally invested. I don't know if it's because we've watched like three episodes back to back today, which is a lot, and the momentum of that has just carried me through um, doing that. Um, but I was think, watching it, towards the end, I was thinking, you know... I don't know if I'm going to be able to fairly rank these episodes when we do the ranking because just well these last three in particular yeah because I just I just was so any critical mindset was just gone yeah. I was just there was a moment where I was like wow I've just been smiling throughout this whole thing yeah just what a satisfying finale and every you know? single performance is on point isn't it everyone in this episode in these three episodes is just Knocking it yes. out. Of oh, um, Journey's End by Russell T. Davis. Yes, that's the episode that's we're, what we're talking about. Yeah, um, I think we should mention it at the top because it's kind of impossible not to talk about Jack and Mickey in these episodes. But I think we should just clarify that when we talk about Jack and Mickey, we're talking about the characters written and created by Russell T. Davis. We're not talking about John Barrowman and Noah Clark so much. We're talking about the characters and their involvement in the story. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so let's get straight into it. Um, the most clickbaity episode of Doctor Who ever. Yeah, straight out of that regeneration, like shit all happened. I remember when this episode first aired. I remember as soon as that happened, and he was fine. One of my neighbours was so angry. <laughs> I think they just walked out onto the street just to be like, really? <laughs> yeah, just to have a moment to breathe. Just to... I think they were really ticked off by that. <laughs> That's brilliant. I, I remember. I'm, it's within yeah. less than 30 seconds yeah. of the episode kicking off. He just goes with his hands yeah. and he's fine. He's like, oh, I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's insane remembering watching that because it, it was like a football match, you know? The streets were, other than that, dead silent because yeah. everyone was indoors. Apart from your one neighbour. Yeah, my <laughs> one pissed off neighbour. Um, <laughs> Uh, I quite I, I like the scene though because I like how the other three don't really so we actually have Martha Je- not Martha sorry Donna Jack and Rose mm. who all just sort of are like the fuck what <laughs> yeah can you do that yeah and I like it because then it's sort of followed up by that scene where Rose is still not totally convinced that it's the same doctor because she's mm. been there before when Chris turned into David totally and it's you know I like how certain things in this episode really reflect upon series one totally totally like it's the first time we see jack rose and the dots together. yeah like, there's that bit where they're like daleks yikes yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's literally really... like they're thinking back to bad wolf yeah it's fantastic uh but fantastic i was, I was surprised we don't, there's no jack and rose thing yeah you mentioned that there's no kind of reunion i guess just in the moment they when they too... meet they meet when the doctor's about when they yeah. think he's about to die yeah so that just kind of gets brushed over. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I maybe would like to, but then I suppose there's only so much hugging and kissing. Yeah. You can really... So many people have to meet and introduce, and like, especially because extra characters are then thrown in with Jackie and Mickey suddenly appear and save yeah, Sarah yeah. Jane. Uh, before we move on to Jackie and Mickey, why doesn't the Doctor every time he regenerates now just chop his hand off and put it in the jar just in case? Um, I guess that, you know, maybe his subsequent incarnations aren't quite as... Uh, attached to that incarnation like we know the 10th doctor is quite attached to being the 10th doctor yeah. you know when he dies finally he says i don't want to go he what hmm? he does what 
Uh, nothing, nothing. Right. Um, the the tenth Doctor stays the tenth Doctor forever. Okay, cool. It's going to be great watching series five with a Moffat Helm series okay, starring David Tennant. It's it's so great. There's a lot of CGI space in this episode, and you kept saying it's very Star Wars. It what is. do you mean by that, Harold? Well, just the Dalek base is a big. Um, do you mean the way everything looks? Like well, like the Dalek to... base is basically a Death Star, this huge metallical planetary base, and it had the reality bomb, which is giant death raid. It's very Star Wars. Can you say detonate the reality bomb like Ringo Star? Thomas, you have to detonate the reality bomb. <laughs> um... Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I think the way this episode looks is just great. I wrote down that the sets are fantastic. It's been a while since we've seen some proper yeah. exciting. And there's been a lot of period stuff, and we've turned left was all sort of set in London. Um, but these last two episodes have just had some really great sort of the production value is just yeah just great. You can tell that they're just putting all of the money into this. Yeah, German Daleks. That's a little bit weird, isn't it? What's that whole thing about? What do you mean? There's a German woman. Yeah, we were. <laughs> so I, I mean, she, that actor, she was putting a role into that. <laughs> um, it's a strange thing where there's so much in this episode that it's strange that Russell wanted to give time to establishing and developing this new character. I mean, yeah. it's very cool. I mean, I don't know what that actor is, what else she's done. Is she, maybe she's particularly accomplished and I just didn't recognize her. And that was like a cool cameo. Yeah. Perhaps. Um, but yeah, that whole sort of thing with the, the um, Oscar, Oscar Hagen key. Yes. I found it, it was good. But then I was slightly confused by the warp star thing that was introduced as well. Did that? What did? Was I, warp star I, was like a little compact explosion. That's Sarah Jane Smith had. I'm mm. not sure if that, if we, if maybe if we watch Classic Who, that was that is something that appears. Yeah. May I, maybe it's from the Canine and Company. Maybe. Oh, we'll get. To or that. maybe it's. In, <laughs> or maybe it was introduced in an episode of Sarah Jane Adventures. Perhaps, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got. I just literally got a note here that says the Doctor Jack and Rose back together since Series One. That's really nice. Yeah, we you've said that. I know. I was just. It's, it, I, was, I was mainly looking at it and I was thinking, it is and it isn't because it's not. Chris. Yeah, but well, you they, still. You feel look, it's it, the same energy. You can feel the energy. It's kind of, yeah. That's one thing that kind of I really like about Doctor Who that kind of you can feel the subsequent actors are able to kind of carry the history of the previous incarnations in the performance. And so stuff like that still resonates. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mickey and Jackie, they show up. That's um they're they're always I remember we pray we really love those characters in series two and one. Series one and two, yeah, you are right. Because we always sort of loved Rose's home life and sort of checking back in on all these people she just forgotten about. Mm. And I, I quite like the character development of some of them as well. Like Mickey, last time we saw him, he was sort of more confident. And then this time he's just walking around with a massive gun. Mm. There's a point where he even confronts Davros. Yeah. Where he just turns in front of him and he goes, you're going nowhere. <laughs> mm. And then, when you, then you look back at when we first met Mickey and he's just like that little coward kid who when yeah. the TARDIS takes off his hiding behind wheelie totally. and stuff like that. It's mental. And Jackie is there. Jackie is also there. And I think we've picked up very quickly that she doesn't, apart from that scene where she escapes the Dalek interrogation yeah. thing, she doesn't really do that much. No, although... And I, then it does pay off. Yeah, I, I like her presence. I really like her presence. I mean, I'm a big fan. I'm just a big fan of the character. Yeah. So even with her not doing anything, it kind of adds to everything. Yeah, because as much as you think, oh, where Rose, where Donna, where Jack, where Mickey, where these side characters, you're not. Yeah. You'd be a Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a scene in it where, where, the, where the TARDIS falls through the Dalek base and it goes into the core of the Dalek ship. Mm. And you see Jack and Rose get frustrated with the fact that Donna's in there. Mm. And I quite like that because it sort of shows the loyalty to the Doctor. Like, even though they've never met Donna properly, yeah. they know that she must be worth something because she's been travelling with the yeah, Doctor. Yeah, and she's important to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk. Should we talk about the Metacrisis Doctor? Because it's about time he appears. Yeah, he appears. Um, so Donna gets stuck in the TARDIS and the hand cracks open, and from there, the Metacrisis Doctor appears. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's whack. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, it, it's it's cool, it's a cool concept, and they have fun with it as it goes on. It's just I'm, su- I'm surprised that they weren't tempted to put in the opening kind of title, David Tennant and all names, and then with David, David Tennant, Tennant yeah. at the end. Yeah. Um, 
the, I said to you, it's weird seeing him in a t-shirt because there's a scene where he's wearing his blue suit trousers and a t-shirt hmm. as he puts on his blue suit jacket. And it was it looked very weird for a second. Yeah, it's strange seeing the doc. I mean, the doctor doesn't really wear casual clothes ever, no. does he? Except for well, Eccleston. Yeah, that's true. Mm. I really love that. I think we mentioned it in series two. Is that they very quickly like that David Tennant is a very funny performer. Mm. You know, he's doing that whole beating out of Samba stuff in series two, yeah. and then over the course of the series, especially with this one with Catherine, they really bounce off each other. Yeah. But the Meta Crisis Doctor and yeah. Donna, the the way they bounce well, because... off each other. Because they're the same yeah, person. Yeah, they are effectively the same person. The Metal Crisis Doctor. They're both and Donna, Donna and they're both the Doctor. And they so. both play off that yeah. really, really well. It's just it's just so fun to watch them. Like, it's kind of, that was some of the first scenes where I was like, big, dumb grin. Yeah, yeah I, I like it when the Doctor says, oh, that's very wizard. Mm. <laughs> Something that Donna has sort of echoed through the whole series. Totally. Um, I literally, my next note is I love how much Russell has tied everything together. Yeah, literally. It's incredible. Three different shows, four seasons of storylines, intentional or not, is just perfectly done. Yeah, and it doesn't feel bloated. Like, there's a lot going on, but you keep track of it all, and it all kind of builds very satisfyingly. Yeah. yeah. Um, Martha's in this episode as well. Yeah. She's sort of having her own little side story. Yeah, with the Ostrahagen key. Yeah. What do you think to her sort of... She doesn't really get much play with the main cast. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you can only have so many people on a Dalek spaceship. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. And it it adds kind of weight, because kind of what she's doing in addition to uh, the uh, Warp Star um, builds to that kind of very climactic, dramatic point with Davros and the Doctor, which is kind of their kind of big conflict yeah, where sure. Davros is kind of like, even if you stop us, me, that's cool because I've shown you, Doctor, that you're not so great. Oh, yeah, I've brought you down a peg. That's true. Um, what are your thoughts on that kind of thesis from Davros, that the Doctor turns people into weapons for him? I mean, we've spoken about it, especially with Eccleston, mm. was if he just didn't turn up, most of that shit wouldn't have happened. Hmm. Especially in that first series. I think they sort of work on that. In the yeah, I feel like this 10th Doctor is much more kind of explicitly heroic. Yeah. Um, but I, um, I don't know, because I think sometimes their character's death is sometimes their own naivety. Hmm. They just want to help. And by doing that, they often put themselves in a place where they sacrifice themselves. Yeah. And as we learn from Turn Left, hmm. if not, that usually means the Doctor would die. Yeah, there were a lot of instances within this where I thought of Turn Left. Yeah. It was kind of thing like, you know, Turn Left demonstrated very well how much the Doctor needs these people and these people need the Doctor. And, you know, none of these guys would be here if neither existed. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think to the Doctor and Davros? They have some great stuff because yeah. there's a scene where Davros tries to sort of take control of the conversation doesn't he and he's sort of like remember the old times <laughs> or whatever and the doctor's like nah <laughs> skip the nostalgia yeah, yeah yeah and he's just like instantly into interrogating Davros and putting him down mm. calls him the Dalek's pet and I love that scene because Davros in his chair just goes <laughs> yeah. very quickly turns away and just goes on to annoying him by pestering yeah. Rose I love like, the awkwardness when Davros is like there's been an arrangement <laughs> yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, let's go back to some uh, 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 stick with Davros for a second. Yeah, because Davros talks a lot. He <laughs> does. There is a scene where my note here says Davros is an effing nutter. Because there is a scene where he's like Laughing shouting in, in his yeah. chair and he's wiggling around and he's going nuts. And as a kid, I don't ever remember being scared by Davros because I think I was just slightly on the cusp of growing out of this being a scary show. I, I feel like if I'd watched this when I had the age I was when I first watched it, this was scared the bejesus out of me. I mean, I'm going to, I don't know if this is a hot take. I know people talk all the time about like hiding when the darks appeared on screen as kids. I never found the darks very scary. I think they're, for me, they're kind of more kind of very fun adversaries. And it's kind of a, yes, when the Daleks are here, when Daniels is here, shit's got real. But I'm not scared of them. It's always a more exciting thing. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it's because like, I kind of have that almost Star Wars esque association with them that they're these big spaceships and flying and lasers and stuff. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite parts of this episode is where Davros remembers who Sarah Jane is. That's such a great moment. Yeah, because I, a lot, I think what we were watching this, and a lot of this is 
taken up by one of us going, oh, I remember. Oh, mm. oh I love this bit that's coming up. And it's just a bit where, like, he's not even in shot and he just wheels into shot and he's, like, utter amazement that he's about to meet another human, the same human twice. Yeah. Which he's probably never, ever done. Yeah. And it's just, like, the way that Sarah Jane... The, the reaction from Sarah Jane in the last episode when she hears the Daleks external is just us of fear. Mm. But then when she actually sees Davros and she knows the Doctor's there and she's like, I think she says, I've learned how to fight. Yeah, that's exactly what <laughs> yeah. she said. It's so cool. And, I mean, yeah, it's great from both of them. And it's interesting because that scene, in terms of the narrative, you don't actually need it. Like, that is kind of yeah. a pure fan service moment. Yeah. But it's the best kind of fan service because it's not just iconography or like, hey, remember this thing? Yeah. Like, it's a character moment. A it's a really service. cool character moment. There is some fan service coming up with some iconography that I think we both very much enjoyed, but we'll, we'll get to it. Okay. Um, sticking with Sarah, the Sonic lipstick, that makes a little appearance. Yes, yes it does. I like that because it's almost like a, yeah, she's still got it. Sort of yeah. <laughs> She's uh, still active. She's, yeah. she's a hero. She has her own TV show, yeah. don't you know? Um, everyone knows who Rose Tyler is. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, Rose must be like, he's a guy not get over me. <laughs> like, still talking about yeah. me all these years later. And also, Rose has really changed her tune about uh, Martha since the last episode. She did, not she? she? In the last yeah. episode, she was like this bitter ex. Yeah. And then in this one, she's like... Oh, she's good. Yeah, she's clever, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because she's not actually there. Mm. She's like, yeah, fuck you. I'm on the big screen. I'm here. <laughs> I'm in the action. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the down the stasis chamber alongside the doctor. <laughs> We're together. <laughs> yeah, because then I was thinking that and, she, and Martha actually says, uh, he found you. He yeah, and she's it. really happy for yeah. him. And then I just think back to when it was a Shakespeare code and they're both laid in that bed. And Martha's like, anything could happen. And the doctor's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's like just not picking up on any of the signs. Oh, so we thought. Um, I'm just um, yeah, let's talk the next because next in the episode is when they do the flashback things, all those characters that have died, mm. and I like that it's not just Tenant's era, they go right yeah. back to Chris's era, and there isn't many, if there's only about three or four that they show, but they go back to episode two with Jabe, yeah, who's just like a character you've probably forgotten about, mm. but because that because, because the set and that character design is so perfect and cool, you remember her, yeah, and I think that's something that's maybe lacked from. Uh, more recent seasons is that the characters aren't really that memorable mm, like the one-off characters you mean. yeah like I can remember Jane like I still remember her name now yeah and that episode was like nearly 20 years ago mm. crazy right it is crazy I mean uh, we did watch it I know but even before that I knew I could remember do you know what I mean yeah yeah totally uh, um let's talk about um should we talk about Dr. Meeting his clone yeah he's not really that fussed no he, he comes about... right out of the time so he just goes no, oh, don't. No crisis. Yeah. Well, has this happened before, do you think? Uh, well, he's met himself, hasn't he, with the three Doctors and the five mm. Doctors and the two Doctors. So I guess meeting uh, the same version of himself is less remarkable. But I suppose when you don't know it's going to happen, he didn't know he was going to see himself for an hour. There was a reaction shot. There was, but it wasn't like... What? I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like, reality's about to be destroyed. Let's talk about the reality bomb. Yes. Davros gets that awesome line where he says, detonate the reality bomb. Um, cool, isn't it? Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. You just, it's just really fun delivery. <laughs> it is. Um, uh, the, we interviewed Colin, who played <laughs> David Tennant's double. We mentioned it last week. I think by now it, it either came out last week or it's coming out the following week. Um, but yeah, definitely check out because Colin had some really fun sort of inside information on these two episodes, didn't he? Yeah, and it was fun whenever. Um, both doctors were on screen, and one of them had their back turned. We pointed and went, Column! It's Column! It's Column! Um, we spoke about Mickey versus Davros. I love that little scene. There's a scene where Rose and Sarah meet again. And yeah, they're, like, they're, hey, nice to see you. Whereas before, when we first met them and they first met each other, there's a very bitchiness sort mm. of. Where'd you pick her, her up from? The Stone Age? Yeah. <laughs> and like, he's like, <laughs> yeah, and there's that scene isn't it, where Sarah's sort of just walking down ahead of Rose and Rosie's sort of just looking over her shoulder like who is this sort of woman because mm. Rosie's only a teenager in those episodes isn't she really yeah uh, Donna you can't even change a plug <laughs> I love they really like to drive home how 
um, limited in abilities Donna is, don't they? They do. I mean, like, the whole reason she gets stuck in the tile is because she cowards away slightly. Mm. Well, this wasn't, didn't she, like, feel the thing calling her? The uh, the hand? Oh, she did, you're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. thanks for, to uh, Dalek Khan, apparently. Yeah, he's... Uh, Dalek Khan was in, influencing that. Do you want to explain that? Because I kind of... I think because, there. like, he got caught in the time vortex thing which is what destroyed him i think he has some kind of like residual time control stuff right okay so he wasn't means, all that bad well he's you know he's crazy and <laughs> kind of he's foreseen the future and he decided yeah let's go with this the daleks are gonna fall because you know like the the core scara were designed to think outside of what a usual dalek can think about so it all makes sense yeah i like the bit where captain jack kicks that dalek into the corridor i like the bit where donna makes the daleks all spin around <laughs> yeah it's good isn't it because there's a scene isn't there i can't remember there's two characters talking it might be the doctor and donna and just in between them in the no, there's a dalek just <laughs> spinning and i've never noticed it before and i just went what the hell's going on and he's just spinning around in the background um, uh, Rose and Ten have a fun moment. Did you notice where they're both looking into the monitor? And they see Gwen. And they go, ah, oh, like that. And they do like a little, yeah. little throwback thing. Um, Very serious too, yeah. When Let's talk about that scene where they're all in the TARDIS and they're all flying the ship together. And working together, except for Jack. Except for Jackie. Because <laughs> I said to you, I said, how did Russell work that out? And then I went, I went, oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> like, I like the fact he went, I wrote, and Jackie into the script and he sort of worked it out and he went, Oh. Like he had all the action figures yeah. around the town, and he was like, oh, this And it's so funny because, like, Murray Gold's score is like real building and building, and it just like cuts out for that it bit. Does. It's such a wonderful, like, punctuation of that community. <laughs> well, it... We missed the part when the Metacrisis starts to blows up all the Daleks. Oh, yeah, and he goes all angsty. That's sort of the turning point, really, isn't it? Where they sort yeah. of determine why these two doctors are very different. Yeah, and it's a similar moment to, um, you know, in uh, The Runaway Bride, the th- same thing where. Yes, you're right, yeah. Um, there's a scene in this which I really love, which is where the Doctor calls on Luke, Sarah's kid, mm. and you, it cuts to Sarah Jane, and she's just so excited to see the Doctor and her son interacting. And yeah. I think it's just such a sweet moment, because she, like, she, I think she, like, screams or she says yes out loud or something. Yeah. I think it's just a really... That moment is pure euphoria. Like, you're just... I'm just beaming. Like, yeah. And even, like, some things, like, you said there's a there's a... Shot and I noticed it where Freema looks into the she looks camera. Right at the this camera, is the camera. Yeah. But it's like it, it kind of just works. Yeah. It's just kind of so like, oh, isn't this great? Yeah, is this fun? Should we talk about the moment of fan service, which I think we both really liked, where we both cheered out loud? Yes. Which is a moment again, another moment we completely forgot something just like two seconds before it happened, which is the return of K9, who we haven't seen in Dot Two anyway since school reunion. And just the way he comes out of a little cupboard and he say basically saves the day. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was just so good. I don't I don't know why I love it so much, but I feel like I feel like I got so excited by that because we had this whole episode. There's Jack, Mickey, Rose, um, Jackie, Martha, Martha's mum, Wilfred, Sylvia, the Doctor, another Doctor, and then you're like, this couldn't get any better. Everybody's here. Then you go, oh, and of course, K Nine's here as well. Yeah, it's just pure. <laughs> Russell's just like, I have all these characters that all these people love. Just let them all yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Let them all fantastic. in. Um, and you, go on, sorry. That it's just like, the moment when I realised what a big dumb grin I had was just like when they were taking the earth back yeah. and the music was swelling and just like <laughs> everyone was like, on earth was like, whoa! Yeah. And then like they land and, and, it cuts to, and it cuts to Wilfred and he just headbutts that little bauble. Yeah! <laughs> Uh, pure joy should we talk about the ending of the episode Harry oh yeah when it gets all sad it gets all sad oh. so um, they land on Bad Wolf Bay well they say goodbye to Mickey, Jack and Martha yeah anybody else uh, Sarah Sarah Jane yeah um, so they say goodbye to them they all go and then they get back on the side and they take them back to the parallel earth with Bad Wolf Bay where uh, the Doctor and Rose they say their final goodbye um, I I, did, I wasn't Maybe because it's such one of those iconic moments in Doctor Who. And we'll build up to it, actually. So let's talk about it. They they arrive on the bay, and uh, Rose sort of works out that she isn't going to be staying on normal Earth. She has to stay on Parallel Earth. And the Doctor gives her Metacrisis Doctor yeah. as a gift. And one thing that I noticed that I, I've literally never noticed until watching now is that the Metacrisis Doctor... And Rose's costumes in that moment are actually colour coordinated. They both have purple jackets. 
yeah. blue purple jackets and a red shirt underneath. Yeah, kind of a maroon shirt underneath. Yeah. Which I thought, I don't know if that was intentional. But, but then the Doctor and Donna also have... They're both in brown. brown yeah. yeah. I like it, so it matches up very well. Um, what do you think... Have you heard... I know this theory sort of busted now, but the theory that the Metacrisis Doctor is Peter Cushing. How does that work? Okay, so Peter Cushing's Doctor Who movies feature a human who calls himself the Doctor, okay. who makes his own time machine. Okay. So he's not from Gallifrey, he's not a Time Lord, he's just a scientist who calls himself the Doctor, who has his own time machine. And the theory is that the Tenth Doctor, the, the, the Metacrisis Tenth Doctor, ages up to become Peter, Peter Cushing. Cushing. Okay, I actually kind of like that. I do, but then Stephen Moffat put the Peter Cushing movies... Yeah, Peter Cushing is canon yeah. now. Uh, what well, those movies are canon within the Doctor Who. Yes, as in yeah. their movies made inspired by the Doctor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I found that the scene in which the Doctor says goodbye to Rose and the Rose and the Metacrisis Doctor kiss, I, I didn't find it as, as much as I think I should because it's one of those iconic moments of Doctor Who where you see it all the time. Yeah. And also the fact that I sort of can't get over the fact that that's not the Doctor. Uh, that's the thing, because it's not... I'm, I know I've seen kind of Russell talk and Confidential about it, about how it's... Everyone... It's not emotionally satisfying because you as a viewer don't want the Rose images, to be... The image of Rose kissing the Doctor is satisfying, but when you, in the context of the episode... Yeah. You don't want it to be that Doctor. You want it to be our Doctor. Yeah, exactly, you don't want to be yeah. this guy. And so it's a very... And it's just like the pain of the the doctor, doctor having to watch this woman he loves be with the like the man of her dreams, which is an exact copy of him. Yeah, and that he can't have that, and it's it's a very weird one emotionally. Yeah, it's a very emotionally complex scene. It isn't just because he just gets yeah. back on the Talus and disappears. It doesn't. Yeah, like immediately, like as soon as they start kissing, it's like, yeah, I'm yeah. fucking off. What I, what I did find more emotional is what comes next. Yeah, that hurts so which much. Which is the Doctor realising what's happened to Donna and having to wipe her yeah. mind. And Donna knows exactly, because yeah. she has the Doctor's mind, she yeah. knows exactly what... And probably throughout this whole thing, she's known this is an inevitable... Yeah. And what I particularly found emotional is that you can tell the Doctor is getting really... He seems angry because it's another person who he's having to say goodbye to. It's another companion that he can't yeah. hang out with much longer. And you sort of get the sense that he's really sick of this now. Yeah. And he's like, why does this keep happening to me? Because he's like, he keeps asking her questions and when she responds, he gets frustrated with, it seems like he's really frustrated with Donna mm. for allowing what happens to happen to her, but she couldn't really help him. Yeah, so if it, I think it's just a frustration with himself that it's just another thing out of his control. Yeah. And he's, he's just so tired. He's so tired yeah. and weary and angsty yeah. like you have the shot of him at the end standing in the rain that famous gif that famous <laughs> gif but in context it's just like oof, yeah geez and, that, and, then it, and it does that whole amazing flashback thing where it, it doesn't show the doctor and donna it just shows clips of donna yeah on her own doing all this amazing and all the, stuff yeah and i think what's made it more impactful is the fact that we, we just watched turn left yeah but we've seen what donna is like without the She's doctor not a nice person and it's, and literally <laughs> will says she was better with you yeah and it's true. Yeah. Um, let's talk about that because a bit that really caught me off and I got a lump in my throat is when Wilf opens the front door and he looks down and he sees a doctor on his knees with Donna and the doctor asks help Wilf me. for help. Yeah. Wilf for help. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, help. It's <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's just such brilliant, such brilliant. The way you can go from that moment of everybody in the TARDIS, mm. like those four years of perfect storytelling, it's all combined into that one, two minute scene. And you're just so happy, and all of a sudden it just rips away from yeah. you again. And the this the whole I said to you the ending in this episode it isn't like the last few series. There's no Titanic crashing through the yeah. wall. There's no regeneration. Uh, so what do we have? Series two ends. Series one ends with regeneration. Series two, Runaway Bride. Runaway Bride. Series three, Titanic. Titanic. Series four, just sat on his the own. The Doctor just sat in the TARDIS. Have you seen Don't. the alternative ending? There's an alternative. Okay, so I will try and find it now in which it leads into the return of the Cybermen. Okay. Okay, but um, all in all, Harry, how did you find this episode? I, um, by the way, I don't have a quiz or anything yeah. this week. I for don't... those who listen for the quiz. <laughs> no one listens for the quiz. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's just kind of an emotional bias because I feel like if I were to like really try and be like critical and compare this to 
um bad wolf and the passing of the ways those that those stories will probably come out on top but just here in the moment I don't know, this might be my favourite series finale. I'm not sure. Perhaps, yeah, I think it might be mine. Uh, I'm just going to show Harry a clip. I will talk everybody through what's happening. I'm not going to play him any audio. But it's the Doctor in his TARDIS. He's wearing his suit, which is different to what we saw. Oh, yeah. He's walking around the console. It's all sad, slow. He's sat on the chair and he, yeah, you know, everything seems sad. Uh, he, sort of, he catches a glimpse of the monitor and he goes over, takes a look. Uh, we get a quick look at the monitor. There's some stuff spinning around all Gallifrey and text. He leans into the camera, says, says what? what? And then the two, two Cybermen, Cybermen appear That's, from behind I'm him. so glad they didn't do that. I'm glad I'm so glad it just... takes away from how he's feeling because he's suddenly yeah. like, oh, what another thing. Yeah. Whereas this is, in the last four seasons, this is the most yeah. impactful thing that we've had. So and the Doctor's in a very different place now. He's yeah. been beaten down by all these people that he's changed and lost. Yeah. And he's just kind of back to square one. It's like, at the end of this all, and these four series where he followed him and he's met so many people and done yeah. so many things, he's kind of still in the same place, you know? He's still on his own. Gallifrey's still gone. I Because what I quite like, and, you know, I have to wrap this up shortly, but he says to Rose that the Metacrisis Doctor is him when they first met, mm. so she can work to make him better. But at the same time, the actual Doctor is back exactly where he was almost four seasons ago. Yeah. He's on his own and he's upset and he's pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> He's and, lost everything again. Yeah, and it's that. That's the. Everybody ugh. goes off with their family. Sarah goes off with her son. Jack, Mickey, and Rose. Jack, Mickey, and Martha. They all go off to her own thing. Rose is happy with her family. Donna's forgotten everything. She's back to where she was, and he's the only one. He's the left doctor on his own. and the TARDIS. Left on his own again. It's yeah. kind of sad. It is very sad. But of course, we will be doing our series four um, sort of recap where we rank every episode. Yes, we've done it for the last three seasons. Go check those out. I'm going to need to spend some time thinking i've struggled because there, there is a few duds but then there's a few gems as well mm. um so that it's going to be interesting to sort of see how they all fall i think they're going to be slightly different lists but um no recommendation no quiz this week all i will recommend is maybe if this is your first episode for some reason go back and listen from the start because we will be back shortly with our series four ranking um we've got all the specials to come we've got an interview coming out and we've also got something else do we? That sounds like everything. We'll see which sort of ranking down into that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and we'll be soon wrapping up the first Russell T. <laughs> Davis era. Do you know that was the most exciting thing about watching this? Is I'm watching it and I'm loving it. Yeah. Just knowing that so very shortly like, I get to experience the, 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 it all again. The score, <laughs> the writing is like, we're getting more of this. You know, like your favorite film or your favorite album, you always go, I wish I could listen to this again for the first time. That's what we're going to experience. <laughs> Except it's probably going to be even better because Russell's an even better writer. Oh, okay. I need to hold myself back. Oh. Cool, yeah. Well, thank you very much for listening to this fire, everybody. If you have listened for the whole series, thank you very much. Um, I saw some comments on one of our recent videos from people saying they really enjoy the podcast. So we really appreciate it. Do make sure you like, comment, subscribe, follow all our socials because we ask questions on there and stuff. And sometimes if we remember, we will put them in the podcast. So um, I'll say goodbye. Bye, everybody. Harry, do you want to say goodbye? Bye-bye. Spider-Man. Make sure you subscribe to the official bigger on the inside.